Aw, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for having me. And thank you so much, Khalud and Forms, the whole team, Princess Nora. It's an honor to be with you all today. And today we're going to speak about a very important topic about confidence and trying to master our confidence because it really does make a big impact in our lives, the opportunities we get, and um, just our overall livelihood. So uh, we're, today we're going to talk about many different tips. I'm going to try to keep it as fast as possible because I tend to ramble a little bit. Um, let me see if I know how to use this clicker. Okay, let me see. Okay, so first we're going to talk about what is confidence. Confidence is a feeling of self-assurance arising from appreciation of one's own abilities and qualities. So the main thing that sticks out to me here is that it's a feeling, which means it can change, it can easily become stronger or weaker depending on how we exercise ourselves, and it's about appreciation. So self-love, appreciating ourselves, and learning to just value ourselves, and also working on increasing our abilities to do things in life. So the more you exercise these different tips that we're gonna talk about, the more you're gonna increase your confidence. Okay, so firstly, I'm going to ask you guys, who here feels like they were born confident? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. So I'm going to say something a bit controversial, but I feel that nobody's really born confident. It's something that you have to build. It's a muscle. It's something that the more you work on it, the more you get more of it, and it's something that you have to work to continue to have. It's something that you can't just, it's like exercising and being fit. I'm looking at Maya. <laughs> you know, you can work to be fit, but if you stop working, you also lose it. It's, it's the same thing with confidence. If you work on being confident, but you don't continue that work, it will go away as well. So it's really important to try to work on every single area to maximize and continue doing that. So today I've chosen to do 23 tips because it's my favorite number and also because it's 2023 this year. <laughs> so I'm going to try to keep it really fast and smooth. And for the first part, we're going to talk about the more easy tips, which are our outer confidence. These are the more tangible, the physical things that we can work on on ourselves. And the second part is going to be the inner confidence, which is a little bit more hard to do, but it's a lot stronger and it makes a bigger impact. Okay. So firstly, we're going to talk about looking your best, which of course, that's a big part of what I do. And I think a big reason why I love what I do in, in terms of making people look their best is because it makes you feel your best. You know, and we're going to start first with finding the right outfit. So every single person here, you know, we have different occasions we have to go to, whether it's a speaking engagement, whether it's a meeting, whether it's a first date, whatever it may be where you really want to feel your best to look your best, find an outfit that you're comfortable with. And I recommend just finding the right look. Like today I'm wearing this, this suit. My amazing stylist helped me pick it out. Maha, she's right here. <laughs> And it's something that makes me feel comfortable. It's hiding the areas I feel more insecure about, but it's also extenuating the nice parts that I feel confident about. So figure out what you like to wear. And I know we had a workshop with Cedric the other day, which was really nice, but get to know yourself and figure out what makes you feel like you look the most confident in your outfit. Um, next, we're gonna talk about makeup, of course, because makeup is also magical. You know, finding the right power lipstick shade, the right go-to look, you know, and it could be really short, like I have five-minute glam for my like rushed meetings or like my quick calls that I have to get ready for, but find a quick look that will just give you that boost of confidence to make you feel like you're ready to take on that challenge. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy, but you can make it easy, and that's what I, I'm emphasizing on here. Find a hack. So find that one makeup look that's your easy go-to look that you know when you wear this shade of lipstick, it's going to give you that boost of confidence, and it's like your go-to shade that you're going to feel your best when you wear it. And the next is hair. Like find that one look that's going to be your go-to. Like recently, Maha's pushed me out of my comfort zone to pull my hair back. So now I'm, I'm doing the ponytail. Whenever I want to be confident, I pull my hair out of my face, and I feel my best. So I had to create a separate slide on fragrance because <laughs> I'm the perfume princess, but also because our sense of smell is the most powerful sense that we have. So wearing your power fragrance, to me I call it your power perfume, just like you have a power lip, a power suit, there's a power fragrance. Put it on before you go into a meeting, put it on before you even jump on a call, and even if you're by yourself, that instant boost will just uplift your mood, uplift your feeling, and really help you make a better decision or a better presentation and really just do your best. I was like backstage putting on my perfume <laughs> before today. 
Um, also, I always keep Tic Tacs in my bag because I think smelling fresh makes you feel more comfortable to go give somebody a hug. We're Arab, we're Middle Eastern, so we go in, we greet people, we want to smell our best. So the next one is get your body into peak state. And this is super important, and I know it's a longer conversation. It's something that you have to really work on, but it's crucial. If you don't sleep well, there's no way you can go into a meeting and portray yourself well, or even on stage and portray yourself well. So I have a sleep routine. I have a ritual that I practice every single day. Before I get ready for bed, I take my supplements, my magnesium, my sleepy gummies. I play beach noises in my background to just kind of get me into that zone of like, now it's bedtime. And I have a whole unwind routine that really gets me into that mode of sleeping. So seven to eight hours every single day, just make an effort. I, ha I also wear an aura ring every single night, so I monitor my sleep to make sure that I'm really keeping my body in optimum state. And this is really something that cannot be emphasized enough. If you don't take care of, well, care of your physical body, you're not going to be able to be optimized. And same goes for eating. You can't skip meals if you want to be your best. You have to eat well, try to eat regular meals, eat healthy, and just try and maximize your energy. And also exercise. And if you don't have time to exercise, something I do before my meetings, I like do jumping jacks. Like right before a meeting, I'll do like 20 jumping jacks. My assistant seen everything. <laughs> she sees me sometimes. I'm like, I don't have energy today. I'm tired. I didn't have time to train. I'll just do like 20 jumping jacks and I instantly get a boost of energy that I need to just present myself well. So next we're going to talk about body language. And this is something that I feel like if I could show you guys what not to do, you'd probably be a lot more like aware of how bad it looks when we don't have proper body language. So, you know, whenever people are kind of slouching or they're like laid back in a chair, just remember that's not really going to be perceived well. If I was standing here and I was like, hi guys, like, <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. Of course, you're not going to think that like our body language says so much more than our vocal language does. So just pay attention to that and eye contact, that can't be more underrated. You know, you need to learn how to have good eye contact, not too much where it's a bit awkward and not too little to where people feel like they can't trust you or they feel like you don't have confidence in yourself. And lastly, we're gonna talk about hands. We're gonna talk about hands. So I'm a big believer in overusing your hands instead of underusing your hands because the psychology behind hands is that the more we see people's hands, the more we trust them. It's just the way we're wired. It goes back to cave days where we, when people used to hide their hands, they were hiding a weapon. So like, if you want people to trust you, show your hands in a meeting, greet people really well, and try to make sure people feel like you're excited. So be as, as expressive as you'd like with your hands. Next is a big one, I think, for our part of the world as women. I think we're always taught not to speak up and not to show our voice. I mean, I think growing up, I mean, I don't know if you guys relate, but people would be like, be a lady, be soft-spoken, don't speak too loud, don't laugh too loud in a room. And I really want to say, like, okay, don't be obnoxious, but be yourself. If you want to speak loudly, speak loudly, be present, show your voice in a room. And if you need to get a vocal coach, that's also something I recommend. I've done it myself. So you're working with a coach to just try and like emphasize your words better, pronounce things really well, and also speak louder because I think women are taught not to be present. They're taught to like be as hidden as you can be and that's something that we have to change. So speak as loud as you can without it being too much, but like show yourself. <clears throat> okay, so this one, <laughs> um, this is some advice that if you want to pick a song to be your, your confidence boosting song, <laughs> yes, we do have a song that we're going to play, I think, yes, <laughs> this is my song, <laughs> so, uh, Yes. <laughs> so this is my one of my songs. I actually have a whole playlist and I recommend you guys do the same. Create your own playlist that makes you feel amazing. So I have a lot, but I'll play a song before a meeting, before an interview, before filming something. I played one this morning and I was just thinking, you know, I want to put myself in that positive state. Dance get that energy out there, get yourself excited. And also I feel like when you also say the words to, of a lyrics to a song, it kind of builds your confidence because you just feel like you've got this. So I love that song. I'll share my playlist with you guys um, so you guys can check it out. 
So the next one is breathing, which is also very important from a physical perspective. There's a few different types that we're going to talk about. Box breathing is actually something they use a lot in the military, the Marines. It's very simple. It's just where you breathe in for four seconds, you hold for four seconds, you breathe out for four seconds, and then you hold again for four seconds. So it kind of makes a little box. And this is really helpful. So I would try it with you guys right now, but I think I'm running a bit behind, but definitely check it out. I have a YouTube video on it. I'll share it with you guys, but it's very helpful if you have anxiety and you just want to calm your nerves and kind of just feel yourself be a bit more present and in the moment. Fire breathing is a bit more of the opposite. It's like where you breathe in and out really intensely. You don't even take a break, and it's a great way to boost oxygen to your brain so you get energy. So if you feel you're not having enough energy, you feel a little bit tired, fire breathing is amazing. Belly breathing is kind of like where we want to live, you know, um, just being present with yourself and notice where are you breathing out of? Are you breathing from your, the top of your body? Or are you breathing from your belly? So whenever you have a moment and you're nervous or if you're in a meeting, just ask yourself, where am I breathing from right now? So try to breathe from your belly. It's the best place. Be comfortable. <laughs> and I know that's a lot easier said than done, but what I mean by this is if you have an event or an occasion, don't wear shoes that you know are not comfortable with. <laughs> I, I, I refuse to do it. Like I'm like, no, I'm going to be comfortable. Don't wear clothes that's too tight. Don't, yeah, you have, to, you have to find comfortable shoes. You know, find things that you're really comfortable with. You know, clothes that's really comfortable. If your hairstyle is too tight, just tell your hairstylist, sorry, I need to be comfortable first. Comfort first, because if you're already uncomfortable physically, how are you going to then be your best self in an event or a presentation or a meeting? Okay, so now we're moving more into the inner part of confidence, and I'm going to start with affirmations. I'm sharing with you guys some of my favorite affirmations. Um, so number one, I like to say, I was made for this. So before anything, whether it's a meeting, whether it's a talk, whether it's any sort of big moment in your life and you need that boost of confidence, just tell yourself, I was made for this. Um, I like to say, I am a luck magnet because I just feel like whenever you say that, you start to like self subconsciously attract luck into your life. Um, I find opportunity everywhere I go. That's also one of my favorite affirmations because I feel like if you put that into your mind, you start to see all the opportunity that you have. You attract good opportunity in your life. Everybody loves me and supports me. I think that's a good one too because when you start to feel love from people, you start to give them more love and before you know it, you start to build this amazing energy around yourself and it's just magical. Um, I find solutions to every challenge. I say this to myself every day. <laughs> As challenges come and they always do, I always repeat that to myself. And my last one is, God is always showing me the right path. So these are my affirmations, but I definitely recommend pick some that you feel comfortable with and uh, make your own list. And I create notes for these things. And sometimes I even voice note myself, a recording of myself saying these things to myself. And I listen to them when I'm too busy to say them out loud. And it really calms me down and it helps a lot. So the next um, tip I'd like to share is um, from a book that I read a long time ago. The book is called Life's a Pitch, with a P. <laughs> and it said, there's no such thing as a good speaker, only a clear thinker. And that one statement changed my life because every time I'd get nervous in a conversation, whether it's a meeting or presenting to people, I would just remember, like, what am I doing here? Here I'm trying to teach somebody something or I'm trying to present my, my ideas, I'm trying to build a relationship. So go back to the intention of like what you're really here for. And I did that today. I was like, I really hope today that I'm here and I'm going to share some tips with you guys. And even if you take one tip away and it makes a difference in your life, I'm happy. And that kind of got me to like be more present and not worry about doing a good job. <laughs> all right, next, visualize. So we all know the power of visualiz visualization is so magical, it's so powerful, and I think we, all, all of us in this room probably do it to some extent, but I think it's important to do it with even the smaller things. So like even before a meeting, just visualize how do you want this meeting to end? How do you want to feel after this meeting is over? And I always try to picture success, that the meeting went smooth, it becomes a mutual agreement, a win-win, and I try to feel the, the feeling of gratitude, grateful that it did go well, and joy, of course, happy that the meeting went smoothly and just 
happy that it all went smooth. So I think visualizing is very important, and the more you make a practice of doing it, even on the smaller occasions, it makes a big impact in your life. I'm gonna visualize this working. <laughs> okay, so this is a big one for me, processing your feelings. And there's a few different things I do to process my feelings. I mean, honestly, there's a lot, but the first thing I'm gonna talk about is just something I like to call brain dump. So brain dumping to me is like getting everything out of your head and onto paper or even a voice note to yourself. Um, sometimes I like to walk on the beach and I just voice note myself, all my feelings, even if it's like gibberish, like it doesn't even have to make sense sometimes. But I notice a lot of time when we have brain fog, we're not able to think clearly, we're a bit confused, it's because there's just too much clutter in your head. So getting it out is one of the most therapeutic things ever and it also gives you so much more confidence because you have clarity. So this is something I really love to do and I recommend all of you do it one or two times a day and it could be like five minutes. You could just be like getting the feelings out, like I'm just feeling really nervous today, I don't know what I'm doing, I need to figure this out. Like that, it could just be as simple as that but just getting that out of your head is a great, great thing to do to like reset. And then also just processing your feelings, like understand why are you feeling anxious about a meeting and just write it out. Like I'm feeling anxious because I'm really excited. I really hope it goes well. I really want this opportunity. If it doesn't go well, I'm, I'm gonna be worried about X, Y, Z. So just understanding why you feel how you feel. And I feel like processing your feelings really gives you a lot of confidence. So getting a coach, um, a therapist, coach, all of the above, <laughs> I recommend it all personally, but I think it's really important. And that could be in your own community, somebody local, it could be online. And if you don't have a budget for a coach, go to YouTube. Honestly, the resources they have there are incredible. Like I feel like most of the people who've made the biggest impact in my life, I've actually never even met. I just watch their content every day and I almost feel like I have a relationship with them. So so powerful just to find the kind of content that connects with you and relate with that. Um, the last point is coach somebody else. So even if you don't have confidence yourself, try giving people confidence and you'd be so surprised how mentoring someone else will make you realize what you're overthinking or areas that you can actually easily make quick solutions and change your life. So helping people helps yourself too. Um, call yourself out. So this is something that I like to say, you know, the truth will set you free. So if you are feeling nervous for a meeting and say you're meeting somebody like Seema Ved <laughs> and you want to strike a big deal with her, just say like, look Seema, I'm so excited to meet you, but I'm also really nervous because I really look up to you. Calling yourself out removes the butterflies and it's also very humble, it's very human, you're seen as vulnerable and it's also very relatable. So I think setting yourself free by just saying the truth also makes you have more confidence. Practice, practice, practice. So of course, the more practice you do with whatever it is in your, in your field, whether it's presenting about a certain pitch, a product, um, whether it's your five minute elevator pitch of who you are, your background, just talking about yourself and practicing that will definitely help you boost your confidence. Okay, understanding the power of NLP. So NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming. It's something that um, someone I really look up to, Tony Robbins, he talks about a lot. So it's the way you kind of program your mind and how you talk to yourself. So he says you should always change your shoulds into musts. So I should, you know, practice for this presentation. Change it to I must. And then I want to go a step further and change your must into I want. So instead of saying I, I must practice for this, I want to practice for this. And as soon as you say, I want to do this, you instantly have a boost of energy and you have more confidence because you feel like it's coming from yourself rather than being forced into doing something. Sorry, I'm trying to run through because I have 25 seconds <laughs> on the clock. Okay, celebrate small wins. Um, go outside of your comfort zone. So this is something that I recommend to do if you can once a week, once a month, even if it's the smallest thing, try something you've never done before because just trying something new, even if it's like a game on your phone, download a new phone, a game, and then just play and win. And that little, that little experiment of trying something and winning will give you a boost of confidence. I'm gonna be honest, this is the first time I've ever presented like without a panel and I was nervous, but I was like, I've gotta push myself out of my comfort zone and you know, it's gonna give me more confidence for the next challenge in my life. <laughs> Sorry, I'm out of time. <laughs> Thank you, you guys are so sweet. Thank you so much.
I think we're almost done. I'm sorry, Khalud, I'm over time. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're so sweet. Know who to call. Build your tribe of positivity. So I have a lot of amazing women and people in my life who I call when I'm feeling nervous, when I'm feeling anxious, and I'm so grateful for their support. So if you have, even if it's one person in your life, just know who they are and know who to call when you are feeling nervous. Also know who not to call, because we all know there's some people in our lives, they might be people we love, but we know they make us feel more nervous, they make us feel bad. So don't call those people, but know who that tribe is that you're going to have when you're feeling low. And if you don't have those people in your life, find them online. There's so many people I watch online who, when I watch their videos, I instantly feel excited, energized. I feel like I can do it too. And lastly, be kind to yourself. Remember that we're all doing our best and you need to be your biggest cheerleader. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. Do we have time for Q&A? So we're going to take a Ladies. few questions. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mona has very kindly said that she'll take a couple of questions. Does anyone have any? Coming to you. Yeah, working. Yeah, hi, how are you? So, like, I want to ask you, like, everyone is saying that you are a great spirit, and this is what I can see. So can you just please give us an advice how to be, yeah, how to, how, how to be just you, because you're so humble, you're down to earth, you're so transparent. So just give us an advice about that. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Um, honestly, I think everybody deep down inside is kind and, and a good spirit. We all have good inside of us. I think that you just have to make the practice of surrounding yourself with good people, taking good action, and I think just be more, be more willing to be vulnerable. Don't be afraid to show affection to people. I think, you know, I've always been kind of loving, but I think it's because of my mom, and I think it's contagious. Like, you know, if you show love and affection to people, they're going to show it back to you. They're going to give you gratitude, appreciation. They're going to encourage you, support you. So I think it's within every single one of us. So just try to make that practice of, of giving it to others, and they'll give it back to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Hi, Mona. Hi. Since we're at the Empowerment Summit, and that's the overall theme, what is one thing you feel you could do today to empower women? You know, I think one thing we are doing is what we're doing right now, like this event, Forbes, Princess Nora, this whole organization that you guys put together. I think just being together with a community of women who want to give back, who want to lead by example, who want to help others, I think just take as much action as you can and surround yourself with those people and help them. We can all help each other. And that's what I think all of us have done here today. I've connected with so many amazing women who are saying, you know, they had a challenge with this or they had an idea they want to explore together. So these kind of events are a great way to just give back because we're building this community of encouragement, of excitement. Um, so yeah, I think this event is the perfect example of that. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. You thank are you. really very inspirational. Um, I had one question for you. You were talking about your routines, your night routine, and I completely believe in that and I have an amazing morning routine but I never can do anything at night because I end up being so tired. So what are your recommendations for maybe like a quick evening routine, something for like when you're just like, I'm done, yeah. I just wanna lay down. Any yeah. tips? Well, you know, I don't do much at night either. Like I start switching off mentally at like 8.30, 9 p.m. I'm like, I'm ready for bed. So I think you kind of have to pick when you wanna have that, that energy for work versus, you know, energy for just yourself. And even though I do unwind for myself, like I actually, at night times the time I go on social media to enjoy for myself, not for work. Um, so having that routine is important, but my bedtime routine is like 30 minutes. It's really short. It doesn't take any energy. It's really relaxing. But I think just having a solid routine helps us build those healthy habits and we do it daily. And then you know, as soon as you even like close the curtains, it's like those atomic habits that make you realize it's bedtime, you start to wind down and go for a bed. <clears throat> Thank you. I hope that helps. <laughs> I'll send you my list. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, Mona. Um, I wanted to ask you a question in life and in business. Sure. What is the one thing you would tell your 18-year-old self? Ooh, that's a deep question. <laughs> I in love deep questions. And in business. <clears throat> In life and in business, I think a few things, but I'll keep it short. 
Um, Number one, trust your gut, like always. I think I didn't start doing that until very recently, and all of my regrets came from not trusting my guts, ignoring my feelings, and I think also process your feelings. So it kind of goes to both. It's like with work and in personal life, process your feelings and trust your gut. If you don't process your feelings, your gut has a disconnect, and you don't know what you're feeling anymore. You're kind of like putting a weird gap between what you feel and reality. So be in touch and trust your gut, because your gut knows everything. 100%. (laughs) Everything. Thank you you so much. Hi, my darling. (laughs) We love you, Mona. I love you more. I'm going to do the deserted island thing with you. So the one food, the one person, and the one skin or makeup thing you would take to a deserted island. Oh, my gosh. That's a good one. One food, one person? And one makeup or skin thing that you would take to a deserted island. (sighs) That's so hard. Um, For food, I mean, I guess I'd pick a coconut because there's so many... (laughs) (laughs) It's <laughs> multi-purpose. <laughs> Inside joke. <laughs> um, and then I'd have to say my husband, because I, I don't get to spend enough time with him at all, so I'd love to have him on a deserted island. <laughs> and for makeup, I'd probably, I'd, I'd take perfume instead. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You're so sweet. Um, <gasps> your personality is very um, nice. And I thank saw you, you a month ago in London, and I think... Uh, to be a strong uh, woman, you have a nice team, and I think the people that you pick around you, and you come to the um, restaurant, and you give a good vibe to the Thank old you. restaurant, and everybody asks who's, who's this and who's the lady. Oh, Thank and you. And I think this is uh, make the women strong, women uh, support women. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? I feel like it's something that I've learned with age. I think when you're younger, you're a little bit more competitive. You're a little bit more insecure. But I think that the more you believe in yourself, the more you realize, like, everybody's on their own path. We're not in competition with each other. Like, you're a lot more comfortable just to, like, celebrate everyone. So I I hope that people can start to learn that younger because I think back in the day when we were young, we were taught to compete with everybody, and I think it's really unhealthy. So just be your own individual, celebrate everyone, and yeah, absolutely keep the most amazing team around you at all times. It's so important. Couldn't do anything without them. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Is there? Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you so much.